My guest today made his Broadway debut last season as the star of the Broadway musical Ghost, which is closing on August 18th. If you haven't seen it yet, you should, and here's one of the reasons why, Mr. Richard Fleischman. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So this is a little bit of a bummer, huh? Ghost is yeah. coming, coming to an end. It's, um, it's kind of, it's been such a whirlwind, especially since we got to America. It's yeah. been, um, never really uh, sat down for a second. We had this crazy rehearsal period, which right. was so intense, and then into the tech, and then we previewed for 11 years, and then we, <laughs> we finally opened, and then um, we had the Tonys, and so there's just one landmark after one another, event, and then right. we finally kind of got settled, and now we've had the news that we're, we're closing, so it has been a real whirlwind, yeah. I thought you were terrific in the show. Thank you. And I think that um, you deserve a lot of acclaim for it, because very kind. I feel like it's sort of the type, type of performance that people don't necessarily understand, or I don't think people understand the show. I think it's like maybe too modern for, for Broadway critics to understand, maybe. or uh, I don't know. So. How, how are you feeling now? You've been doing this show for what, like a yeah, year and a half? A long time. I mean, it's a, it's a funny thing. Um, I mean, we're still kind of coming to terms with, with the news because it's pretty, pretty new. Yeah. Um, but right now, as I talk to you, we have two weeks left till we right. finish. And that even in itself is a concept which I'm struggling to get my head around because I've been doing this. I've been playing this part for two years. Yeah. You know? And um, so there's so many elements of that which are, are crazy to me to think that I'm going to wake up two weeks today and, and not have to play Sam Wheat again. Yeah. Um, I don't know what my life is without that guy and what uh, my, you know, my life has been this show mm -hmm. for two years. So um, I'm very excited in one respect to, to get the chance to, to do other things and, and not least to have a holiday. Um, but I'm devastated to have to leave it behind and, um, and, and, and not to mention the relationships that are formed uh, as part of this job, you know. It's, it's changed my life in, in so many ways, so it will be very sad. Yeah, you're at an age. You're, you're how old now? 23. Right, 23. So you're at an age. This show really, I mean, these are like great years for you. I, start, I played Sam for the first time when I was 21. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 a, it's, a, um, it's funny to think about that time in someone's life. Yeah. And that, that you're thrown into this huge sort of whirlwind. Definitely. Of, and it took me from Manchester in my hometown, yeah. in Manchester, little Manchester, right. to, to That's London. That's the show premiered, right? Premiered in, in just, just pinning a map. They chose Manchester, which was great for me because it meant I got to, you know, all my family and friends could see it. Yeah. Um, then we moved to London, which was in itself a huge achievement for the show. And, and it was a really great um, success over there. And then we got the call to say we were coming here. So which was just never even in the equation. When we started off in Manchester to think we could end up on a different continent 12 yeah. months later, it was insane. So yeah, it's been, it's been a crazy two years. Do you agree with what I said? Do you find it, do you think that the show is maybe hard for people to understand? Because I think that it works in sort of a really cool modern way. And I think that it sort of has its own rules. Um, yeah. What do you think of that, about I that? I think. I mean, well, I guess I, you've. Have you seen the show? I guess. Have I've, you seen I mean, it? I've seen enough of the show to know what people uh, see, yeah, you know. But right. I mean, I haven't seen the show kind of start to finish or right. anything like that. But um, I think it's a tricky one for, for me because I know um, reaction wise, um, maybe by, by people, the, the professionals who came to view it, um, that's an entirely different. Um, reaction to the reaction we get every night. Whenever we go to stage door, um, the reaction, what people tell us is that yeah. it's, it's, it's amazing and they, they are crying and they're feeling something. And so um, from my point of view, you know, I've never been involved in something that's affected people like that. You know? yeah. and I've been lucky enough to be involved in things that critics have loved and, and people haven't really cared much about and, right. um, and, and, and vice versa. So um, yeah, it's a funny one. It's, it's, it's kind of strange, but that's the whole point of theater. It's subjective. So. We have a, a word of mouth panel, which is like a regular, we have regular people review shows and they love Ghost. I mean, yeah. ra rave review. Great. So it's, it's interesting. There's always that, that sort of disconnect. Yeah, I think, I think uh, as you were saying though, it, it, it's a tricky one. I think it pushes the boundaries of what people are used to. Yeah. And um, without wanting to be too grand about it, I think whenever anything ever does that, whenever an idea is new and, and fresh, it, it gets a, a kickback. You know, it's yeah. very difficult for people um, to, to go in and see something that does throw a curveball, you know, people aren't used to seeing these either illusions or the big lights yeah. and things. And, and so I can understand that can, can be a problem. And not, not least to mention that I think our trump card with our show is its emotional content and, mm. and the fact that if you allow yourself to go in with an open mind, then it, it, it takes you on a journey and, and very often leads grown men a, a gibbering wreck by the end of the two <laughs> hours, um, but which is, is obviously a great thing, but can be lost, I think. In, um, in a professional capacity of someone coming to view a show with a clipboard in front of them, that's a barrier to allowing themselves right. to, to, to be, right. you know, let on, so. 
So, yeah, there are a lot of illusions, and you're at the center of a lot of them. Yeah. So now that it's closing, why don't you just explain how everything is done? <laughs> just lay, lay it out, lay it out. Because um, Paul <laughs> Keeve, um, <laughs> the guy who's spent years working out how on earth to do these things, and he deserves so much credit because before I did this job, I, I, I suppose I just assumed that there was like a manual you'd go to right. as a magician, and, and you know Matthew Watchers would go, oh, we need someone to walk through the door, and they go, okay, walk through a door, <laughs> that's page 294. You know, it doesn't exist. Like, he just right. invented this stuff, and that's, that's kind of brilliant. And um, no one really knew how it was going to work until it was just theory, until they spent hundreds of thousands of pounds developing these yeah. ideas. And, miraculously it worked. So he deserves a lot of credit for what he did, Absolutely. but I'm, I, I can't tell you how it's okay. done. Some, maybe, maybe some. It's magic, it's magic. It's you know, magic. you actually are, you could actually be, you could do this, you could, this could become your Hello Dolly. You could do this show for like 30 years. You're, you're only 23 now. Well, that's the Sam, irony, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, maybe I'm a bit too young to play it. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could just, are you, gonna, are you gonna keep doing Ghost or do you think this is it? I think, I, I honestly think, um, you know, Broadway is seen as the pinnacle of, of yeah. uh, musical theatre and I think to leave it here has been been amazing and, and I'm just so honoured that they, they thought to bring me across and uh, yeah. to let an English guy play an American hero, you know, it was so unlikely and I'm just very flattered so I think I'm, I'm ready to put Sam to bed. So you must have people, I know that um, you have a lot of stage door madness, I, w women, you have to sign women's breasts and... It happened once, I keep, well, <laughs> I said well, that story once, good, I right? wish it happened every day. Like, Did you they, sign them? I, of course I signed them. W where, where on them? Was um, it, were, well, there was, were they there was, sizable or? They, well, uh, this is getting tricky, they were certainly, they were, I was not complaining in any, in any respect. <laughs> Sorry mum, if you're watching this. <laughs> your your mum is a, a big deal uh, in London. She's an actress, yeah, yeah but yeah, both yeah. my parents were actors. And, yeah. she, and you actually um, followed in her footsteps a little bit on Coronation Street, right? Which is I big, did, so yeah. Clear. Well, I was the reason she left Coronation Street, because she was pregnant. So she, oh, okay. Um, and, okay. and so there was always this joke that she got pregnant, but her character didn't. So she would, there would be like a big newspaper, like <laughs> precariously <laughs> placed or whatever it would be. And that was me. And then I was a fetus and made my comeback uh, 12 years later as a, as a proper character. Yeah, when I, I was at the London opening of Ghost, and you, your mom was a big deal for the photographers. And, yeah, and yeah. I, was, I had to educate myself. Who, who <laughs> is she? She's been great. She was here last week as well. She's yeah. seen, I think she's seen the show an unnatural amount of times. Something yeah. well, because we started in Manchester as well. She was there like all the time. Right. So I think she's seen it well into the twenties now. Bless her. But she's uh, she's been an amazing support to me always, as has my dad as well. So what is your what is your plan? So two weeks from now, are, are you going home? What, what's happening? Well, I don't really have a home as such, because uh -huh. I mean, home, the word home, I suppose I would assume means England, but really it doesn't, because I've never lived, I've not lived in Manchester with my family for a, a number of years. I moved to London when I was 17. Okay. Um, and so London, I don't have an address anymore, because I was renting, and so uh -huh. I gave my flat up. So now, in about four weeks' time, I'll be addressed and say, I'm going to stay here, because I've got friends coming to visit me okay. uh, for a planned sort of staycation. So we're going to do New York. So nice. um, any stories of arrests or anything in the newspapers, just ignore it. It won't be true. <laughs> it's probably true. But um, So we're going to have a good time, and um, I can just relax and, and not worry about singing the next day and things like that, which is going to be an amazing feeling. So um, I'm looking forward to that. And then hopefully go and find a beach somewhere to sit on for a week or two and then um and then we'll see i mean it's it's you'd like to stay in the us i think so i think the the idea is um we're, we're still kind of playing with certain things that have reared the head um since i found out this was closing because obviously yeah. when you're in something long running yeah right you don't know and yeah. so the second i got a finishing date um, there's been a few things kind of talked about and um i've always fancied living um, in the US, whether that be here or, or elsewhere. Uh -huh. So um, we'll see. I mean, I've had an amazing nine months here, so cool. I don't know. I've got no immediate plans. We'll see. So how's that? How's that Casey Levy girl? How's she doing? She's a nightmare. <laughs> she'd be all right if she could sing. She'd be all right. But she's just... No, do you know what? I mean, on a serious note, without wanting to get too gushy, she has literally been the most incredible person to work with, and we are the best of friends. And I can't imagine having done this job without her. She's just... Amazing, and and um, it's just wonderful because we started it together. You know, we start yeah. we we yeah. met in our final audition. We started this whole thing together in Manchester. We we came to London, and I looked after her because she was in a foreign country. And then I came here, and she looked after me. And so, I've got a friend for life. I really have. How many times in I don't remember how many times in a show do you guys kiss? It's definitely got more. It's <laughs> a lot. It, it started out as less. Now it's yeah, but I mean we don't think about it anymore, you know, as much as we initially did. 
Um, you've but, but, but it's if a lot. you think about the run of this show, you you have like I've kissed locked the lips with this girl a lot of times. Yeah, a lot. There's a lot of jealous men around. I assume. It's been I'm great. trying to figure out if you've kissed her maybe more than any other woman in your life, um, or is your personal life crazy? No, no. I mean, it's certainly up there, though. You know, my <laughs> longest relationships are bordering two years, and. Even those, exactly. I didn't kiss every day. So it's, it's definitely an argument. It's, a, it's, it's a, possible. It's a very possible argument. Top three, <laughs> at least. Um, what are you not going to miss about doing this show? Is, is there anything you're going to be like, I'm that's, not, I'm that's going to be good? Yeah, I mean, I will not miss um, being, you know, there's days when, when the pair of us are incredibly depressed. Like, we, it, does, it does take its toll doing this, yeah. this story eight times a week. And even though it's, 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 an uplifting thing to maybe watch and can certainly be very cathartic, I think. But um, to play every single day and twice a day sometimes is incredibly challenging. And if you want to give it everything, which obviously we always do, um, that can be very hard. And, and I won't miss feeling like an 80 year old man in the morning when I've, and then thinking I've got to do these back flips and fights and fall um, around and, and all yeah. those kind of things. But then again, you know, I will miss the fact that I walk to work and go, holy shit, I'm on. I shouldn't have said that. You can sorry. say shit. I can sorry. say that, fine. Holy shit! I'm on Broadway. You know yeah. that's an inc that that is the best anesthetic for any complaint or any feeling of of tiredness or or whatever. You know, it's just so fortunate. Are you sick of people talking about your abs? <laughs> um, do you know what? I don't. It's you, kind you get of a lot of attention. Well, first of all, let's talk about Sharon Osbourne. How was that? That was great fun. Like, I, did you know she was gonna maul you? I, I had been warned on. that when we did it, they, because also they gave me this top on the premise that I was going to get clay on me. Okay. I should have realized when I had poppers instead of buttons, I should have maybe thought <laughs> something. But you know what? These are just like great. I, my friends called me from England and just went, I just watched that. This is insane. And I was like, yeah, I know. I just made out with Sharon Osbourne in front, <laughs> in front of Liza Minnelli. Like it sounds like a dream you have when, you, <laughs> when you've had way too much to drink. You know, it was, it was insane. So these are just all good stories for the grandkids. I was picturing uh, if, if, the, if the roles were reversed, can you imagine like a, a male a male reporter doing that to like Casey <laughs> Levy, it, it would have been an outrage. Possibly, yeah. But, but, well, but, but it depends like, who the reporter was. I mean, if I guess, it was Matt I Damon, guess. I'm sure she wouldn't mind. You know, <laughs> Ryan Gosling or something, she'd be more than happy. They just take, she took complete liberties with you. <laughs> I didn't mind. I was very, I was very happy. It was all in good, all in good fun. Do you have any like desire to just like just get fat and like forget about your abs and like? Cause you don't have to. You know, every night, you, every night you're showing them right now. So I'm, yeah, there must be a lot of pressure. Well, do you know it's it's a bit like. Um, I watched, um, who's playing Catwoman in Batman at the moment? Um, great actress. Uh, oh yeah, what's uh, Anne name? Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. Uh, there was a great interview where they said, you know, what's it like, what's the pressure like, and yeah. do you feel a massive pressure to wear a cat suit? And she went, well, yeah, there's pressure, but it's like anything, you know, there's no secret. If you know you have to wear a cat suit in front of the world, right. you make an effort to look good. And it's kind of like, well, you know, you know I wouldn't maybe think about it as much, but it's just like me and Casey know we're going to get half naked in front of 1,500 right. people every night. So in the back of your head, when you reach for that second muffin in Starbucks, you go, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it. You know, <laughs> it's just that little thing, but it's you're not. You're picturing the Times Square billboard yeah, as you're reaching yeah. for the muffin. <laughs> but I mean, listen, we no, we, we're very lucky in the sense that the show is so demanding. Um, like I, I do eat loads of yeah. rubbish stuff. Um, so I think that's going to be the biggest thing. I think when I stop doing the show, I'll probably, my diet's so like all over the shop, right. I'll probably be like, whoa, this is really, this needs to change. Right. So um, maybe I'll need to, yeah, kick it up again and be a bit more. So if you were just gonna sit at home and just like get fat, what would you, what would you eat? What would uh, you, what would I'm you? Proper junk food, like yeah. city, yeah. My fa I mean, I was only saying this yesterday to my sister, this is really revolting, but my favorite, when you're drunk and like just want <laughs> disgusting food is you know in a kebab shop like we call it kebab shop they yeah. like a turkish yeah, off, yeah. The, off the yeah, yeah. Um, off the spits yeah. like mixed on meat and chicken just on chips uh, fries and it's just as bad as you can get and you hate yourself for like three days afterwards but at the <laughs> time it's just like perfection and that's that's my yeah nice. that'd be a, that'd be a my thing. poison of choice yeah wow and you do like do you do I, I follow you on twitter you do talk about hangovers and like you're, you're, you're yeah. a 23 year old dude. So have you been yeah. like going out in New York? Have you been experiencing like? Bits, I mean, the, you know, the only time you get a bit boring is like, I, go, I don't go to say nightclubs where you have to shout over the music or anything like that right, because right. you save your voice and stuff. But yeah, I mean, you know, me and Casey will go out and have a 
a couple of martinis. Thanks, Dave Stewart got us into dirty martinis very early on in Manchester, and, and that's kind of been the thing, the, the show. You know, uh -huh. when we're feeling it, we'll go and have a martini. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, we're just normal people and, and want to have a good time. You just have to do it constantly with the sensible voice in your head going, okay, have a good time, but just know you've got to right, perform right. In, you know, on stage tomorrow. You know, speaking of going out, the Ghost deserved the Tony Award for best opening night party. That was a that was a fun party. Good party, yeah. Wow, we, we've been really lucky actually. All the way down the line, we've had great parties, and yeah. I think the one that's going to take the biscuit will be in two weeks' time on the leaving do, when everyone knows they don't have to do anything the next day. <laughs> that's going to be some a serious party. And in fact, I'm throwing um, a little barbecue for all the cast as well oh, nice. on the Monday. So we're going to just day drink through the day and, and, and celebrate and commiserate our first unemployed day of the year. So the final performance is going to lead into a party? The Saturday night we'll have a, a leaving party. Okay. Which will probably end sometime around lunchtime on the Sunday, leaving people to re recover on the Sunday night to get ready for the barbecue on nice. the Monday. It's, it's, oh, it's well thought out. Yeah. And being a Brit, you know, I'm trying to make sure everyone's alcohol level is, is way in the danger zone just for a good 48 <laughs> hours. <laughs> So at what point does the partying actually end? Like Tuesday, There's never Wednesday? an end. It doesn't have, it's, it's, it's on the invite, it's 2 p.m. onwards. <laughs> and most people don't have work commitments, so it could be sometime on Thursday, we'll see. Nice, nice, so you have a good time. <laughs> It'll be good, I'm looking forward to it. Have you been, uh, if this is too personal a question, you can throw the drink in my face. Have you been uh, dating any like American women? Have you been like going out, have you, I don't this know, New York personal. girls? Um, I've, you know, I've, I'm, I've been single the, the time that I've been here, so uh -huh. I've, I've, I've enjoyed myself. It's been great, you know, there's been... Do you like Americans? I love Americans, yeah. you yeah. love American friends now. I always, I always kind of thought I should have maybe been American <laughs> in a funny kind of way. I like, I love the fact that when I get in a lift in the morning, uh, an elevator in the morning, that people go, have a great day. That's just such a lovely thing, uh -huh. whereas in England, everyone's... Everyone's so reserved, and there's, you know, people mistake that for fakeness, I think, sometimes right. in, in Americans, and I don't think it is. I think there's a genuine, lovely um, community thing, yeah, and uh -huh. even in New York, which is famed for being, you know, everyone like right. this, there's still a lovely relationship that happens, and people chat to one another, and the dorm, and the concierge, and they're all so charming yeah. and chatty, and it's just a really nice thing, and that doesn't happen so much in England. So you maybe want to be American? Um, I'm very proud to be British. You have I love being British. Well, you, you do a great American accent, so you could actually just... You could decide, like, right now, that from here on out, you were just going to be American all the time. You could just do it and pull it off. Maybe, but I think that would be very detrimental because I've never... I mean, I thought I would spoke normally until I came here, and then now uh, I get loads of attention because of the way I speak, which is a lovely thing, so I, I don't That's mind. True. That's true. I always joke right. to Casey at the end of the show, I go out like some kind of caricature from Hugh Grant. I, you know, it's like, oh, hello, oh, lovely to meet you. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> It's slightly emphasized. He's like, why are you talking funny? I'm like, well, because it helps. So, um, yeah, but, you know, it, it's a funny thing. It's, it's been... It's been crazy. You've done a lot of things. Obviously, you spent a lot of your teenage years on a soap opera. You had awesome hair. <laughs> I had some shocking hair. What was with that kid? I watched he some YouTube a, he, clips he, of him. I know. He was a goth, and he went through some pretty awful stuff, to be fair. But, I mean, any 15-year-old kid who gets the phone call from their producer and says, right, we've got this idea, we're going to make you into a goth. And I was like, okay, well, that's a lovely, great storyline. What does that involve? What it involves is you growing your hair out, which is, my hair is Afro curls, you know, if I grow uh -huh. my hair out, it goes like this. So it meant I had to straighten it. Oh. They had to, every day before work, oh my straighten God. it. So for any 15-year-old lad, that's a terrible curse to have anyway. Then we have to dye it black. Okay, that's pretty awful. <laughs> then you have to be paled up, you know, to look like anemic right. all the time. Well, this is looking pretty terrible. And then they went, and now, the icing on the cake, we're going to have eyeliner and nail varnish. I was like, you re what did I do to you? What did I say in the corridor <laughs> that offended you so much? So, um, so that happened, and there was plenty of days when I would be, you know, because I was lucky my school was 20 minutes down the road from where we filmed. So okay. I, it was very, like, right. I'd be in maths in the morning, then rushed out, did wow. two scenes, then back for English. Wow. And then, you know, it was kind of that. And it sounds a lot more abnormal now, in hindsight, than it was at the time. It was just normal, and, and I was lucky that my group of friends just treated it like, you know, Rick's got this job, and they knew me before, so it was fine, and um, the school was great. But I did sometimes turn up to like rugby matches with like nail varnish on, and wonder why I was getting hit three times as hard. <laughs> you know? And uh, it was it was a funny kind of a funny few years, yeah, definitely. One thing I really wanted to ask you, and I'm sure Broadway.com viewers are all dying to know this too. James Corden says that you have a lovely, beautiful penis. Fact. Fact. Which is which? That's what he wrote. Fact. Which is something you, you share on Broadway.com. Oh right, so you know that. I was just saying we should maybe explain how he said. Yeah, he didn't yeah, that he to wrote you. The, he wrote he, that. He, yeah, he wrote to, that on my opening message. night message. What, what a nice, what a nice. How, how does he know? 
Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the fact that he was joking, um, <laughs> even though it's entirely true, which is great. <laughs> but um, he, was just, he was just joking. So when you actually get to sort of have fun, the show's over, you're in New York, what do you, are there things you're dying to do that you, that you haven't been able to do? Or? Um, I want to spend more time in Brooklyn. I've lit at the moment I've got to the end of the bridge and then okay. come back. I want to, okay. there's a few, I want to actually see Brooklyn. I okay. feel like I didn't spend nearly a year here and not actually do that. But I mean, I've Brooklyn, done a lot. Brooklyn, he's, he's coming. Richard Fleischman okay. is coming to Brooklyn. Yes. Don't, okay. get, don't get excited, it's going to be very, <laughs> very boring. Um, I maybe want to do the flea market, you know, I've heard that's very uh -huh. cool, so maybe I'll do that. But I went down to Jersey, I saw that, I rented a car for the day because I was missing driving, so I, I kind of went out and drove to Jersey. And, and oh, you were at Atlantic City? I went to Atlantic City Twitter, as well. Twitter. Yeah, oh, Twitter as well. Oh my <laughs> God, I had such a good time, but I did, I, well, I did really well. Like, I, I started at the poker table, sober, uh -huh. went like 400 yeah. bucks up. But that was a good night. But we'd done two shows, played poker till six in the morning, so I was exhausted. Yeah. So I went to bed for a few hours, got up, started drinking, and we all went down. And then being on a, like a, a good run, I thought I was doing really well. Had a few drinks in me, made a call I probably shouldn't have made, and got bad beat and lost it all, all that day. So that was, that was a shame. But it didn't tend to. I had a great time in Atlantic City. That was really cool. Uh, so that was definitely one to tick off. Are you fun to drink with? Are you like a fun drinking buddy? <laughs> what, what, do you, what, do you, what do you throw back? If someone sees you at a bar and they want to send over a drink, what, what should they send you? They do that here, you know, friendly yeah, New Yorkers, yeah, yeah, they yeah, do definitely. that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like a Jack and Coke, probably. Okay. Yeah, maybe All a Jack right. and Coke. Someone sent me, I was in Southern Hospitality the other day, uh -huh. and someone sent me um, a starter, like chicken wings, and I got in an argument with the woman. I was like, I didn't order this, and she's like, it's for you. And I was like, I didn't order this. <laughs> and so I didn't order it, and then it took like five minutes. And then they were like, oh, it's so I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so I ended up tipping the woman because I had a go. I didn't have a go, but I was like, you're wrong. I didn't order this food. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, chicken wings is as good as anything. Jack Daniels or chicken wings. Okay, well, there you go. <laughs> There's your instruction, everybody. Send them it over. It never happened before, but it was a hit. <laughs> well, uh, everyone really, I'm going to go see Ghost again, and everyone should really check it out. I really think that it's a really cool show. It's emotionally devastating. I'm not even going to talk about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you're really terrific in it. Thank and, you And I, I'm really excited to see what you do next. Thank you so much. And thanks for having me on. It's been really Absolutely. Fun. We'll be back with new episodes of Show People in September. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.